The topic of workplace sexual harassment has recently garnered much attention in the national news, media, social media platforms, and in the political arena. Harassment is an unwelcome conduct that is based on race, color, religion, sex, including pregnancy, national origin, age, disability, or genetic information. A cultural shift has and is occurring, pushing many changes forward on the way people perceive sexual harassment and how it should be handled within a workplace setting. This training program will look at the following areas dealing with sexual harassment. Basis of sexual harassment. Definition of sexual harassment. Types of sexual harassment. Sex stereotyping. Effects of sexual harassment. Inappropriate conduct and behavior. Where can harassment occur? Potential victims and harassers. Preventing sexual harassment at work. Retaliation. Actions to take if sexual harassment occurs. Under federal law and many state laws, harassment is prohibited. According to Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, harassment based on race, color, sex, religion, or national origin is prohibited in the workplace. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission EEOC, was created with the passage of this act to address the various forms of harassment equally with the same oversight and enforcement and to enforce the provisions of the act. In recent years, additional state laws have been passed and new federal guidelines established, expanding the basis on which harassment can be based to include sexual orientation, self-identified or perceived sex, gender expression, gender identity, the status of being transgender, Sexual harassment can mean different things to different people. In many situations, sexual harassment does not have to be severe or pervasive to be unlawful. According to the EEOC, sexual harassment is defined as any unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and verbal or physical contact of a sexual nature. Harassment becomes unlawful when Submission to this conduct is made either explicitly or implicitly a term or condition of an individual's employment. Submission to or rejection of such conduct by an individual is used as the basis for employment decisions affecting such individual. Such conduct has the purpose or effect of unreasonably interfering with an individual's work performance or creating an intimidating, hostile, abusive, or offensive work environment. Two types of sexual harassment are generally recognized. They are called quid pro quo and hostile work environment. Abusive conduct is another type of harassment which many states are incorporating into their sexual harassment training requirements. Quid pro quo this phrase basically means something for something. According to the EEOC, quid pro quo harassment occurs when submission to or rejection of such conduct by an individual is used as the basis for employment decisions affecting such individual. This type of harassment is more easily identified and often happens between a supervisor and an employee. For instance, a manager or supervisor, with the authority to undertake or recommend employment actions, promises to give a pay raise, promotion, or transfer in exchange for some sexual favor. This can also occur when one is passed over for promotion, not given a pay increase, or denied a transfer because they would not agree to the sexual favor. In both situations, sexual harassment has occurred. 
most sexual harassment cases are classified as hostile work environments. Harassment occurs when any comment or conduct based on sex, sexual orientation, gender, sexually oriented material, or other offensive material unreasonably interferes with an employee's work and is unwelcome, severe, or pervasive. The comments or conduct are also considered harassment if they create a work environment that is intimidating, hostile, or offensive. Single or isolated incidents of sexual misconduct generally do not create an environment that is considered hostile. A hostile environment claim usually requires proof of a pattern of offensive conduct. The more severe the harassment, though, the less need to show a repetitive pattern. To be considered unwelcome, severe, or pervasive enough to constitute sexual harassment, the activity must also be serious enough that a reasonable person would find it offensive. Hostile work environment sexual harassment includes displays or publications of sexual nature anywhere in the workplace, like pictures, calendars, magazines, and websites, staring or leering in a suggestive manner, telling sexual or offensive jokes, or making sexual gestures, verbally attacking a person about their looks, clothing, body, or other attribute, sending sexually related material via email, letters, or notes, touching, pinching, grabbing, patting, kissing, and brushing against someone. Another form of harassment which can occur is known as abusive conduct. In recent years, this type of harassment has become identified as occurring more and more in work settings. Some states are starting to incorporate abusive conduct training into their sexual harassment training requirements for businesses. Abusive conduct is defined as conduct of an employer or employee in the workplace with malice that a reasonable person would find hostile, offensive, and unrelated to an employer's legitimate business interests. Abusive conduct may include repeated infliction of verbal abuse, such as the use of derogatory remarks, insults, and epithets verbal or physical conduct that a reasonable person would find threatening, intimidating, or humiliating, or the gratuitous sabotage or undermining of a person's work performance. A single act shall not constitute abusive conduct unless especially severe and egregious. Sex stereotyping occurs when someone's personality or actions are considered inappropriate based on preconceived ideas and thoughts on how they should look or act. Harassing someone based on such preconceived notions is considered sexual harassment. Harassing someone for performing job duties that historically or generally is performed by someone of a different sex is also sex harassment. Sexual harassment can have long-lasting negative effects and be difficult to overcome for everyone involved. Sexual harassment can do great harm to an individual, their family, co-workers, and the company. There is often a great amount of guilt and shame that victims wrongfully feel. Stress, anger, frustration, helplessness, depression, and hopelessness are other emotions victims might experience. The family of the victim may also experience many of the same feelings and problems the victim experiences, either as a direct result of the harassment or due to the family member having to deal with the harassment. Other negative experiences are possible, such as financial difficulties, physical ailments, and relationship problems. Sexual harassment can also be very detrimental to the company. Harassment can have the same emotional and physical effect on the victim's co-workers as it does the victim. In addition, employee morale generally declines, 
productivity can suffer, the reputation of the company can be compromised, and financial burdens can be incurred due to lawsuits and settlements. Our society is sexually oriented, and sexually suggestive material is prevalent in many areas of life, including in magazines and movies, television, the internet, and on the radio. Our ideas, thoughts, and actions are influenced by what we see and hear. Often, sexual behavior is used inappropriately in entertainment and the media for humor. While these situations may seem funny on TV or in a movie, when the behavior is real, the effects are not funny. Many behaviors and actions that are portrayed in media are not appropriate in the workplace and could constitute sexual harassment. As an employee, you should understand that some things you might do and say at home or with friends outside of work are not acceptable at work. Many actions are considered, or could be considered, forms of sexual harassment in the workplace. Sexual harassment can occur in almost every employment situation related to work, whenever and wherever employees are fulfilling their work duties. It can occur at the workplace, on work-related trips, training events, business lunches or dinners, and even during work-related phone calls or video chats or conferences. If the situation or location is a direct result of employment, then sexual harassment is possible. It is a common misconception that an employee being asked for sexual favors in exchange for a favor is the only type of sexual harassment victim. Sexual harassment victims can be anyone in the workplace. It can occur between any employees regardless of their sex or gender. Often, there can be more than one victim, especially in situations where a hostile work environment is present. A victim is anyone who is adversely affected by sexual harassment in the workplace. Harassment can come from many sources and even from outside the company. Managers, supervisors, co-workers, customers, vendors, suppliers, delivery drivers, contractors and sales representatives can all be capable of engaging in harassing conduct. Employees can and should take steps to prevent sexual harassment in the workplace. While employers are required by law to institute policies and procedures to stop sexual harassment, employees have an obligation to follow these policies and procedures. Employees can help fulfill this obligation by initiating the following steps. Be attentive during training provided by your employer. Keep your conduct appropriate for work. Watch for inappropriate conduct by others in your workplace. Be proactive and inform others when you feel they are out of line, offensive, or inappropriate. You have a right to ask them to stop what they are doing. When asked, most will oblige and be surprised that they have offended you or others. You also have the right to report sexual harassment. If the harassment did not stop when you asked, immediately report any behavior which is offensive or inappropriate to the designated company personnel. Your company should have at least two different people to whom you can report harassment. Make sure you have a copy of your company's sexual harassment policy and understand it thoroughly. You should have been given training on the policy when initially hired and additional training should be given according to your company's training guidelines. The company policy should outline many important areas employees need to understand, know, and follow. Some things that your company policy should cover include the company's definition of sexual harassment, 
company standards for dress code, workplace behavior, and allowable personal belongings, pictures, calendars, magazines, etc. Names of appropriate personnel and departments to which employees can report possible sexual harassment. Statements assuring confidentiality of complaints. Statements assuring no retaliation will be allowed. Grievance procedures. Possible remedies. Corrective and or disciplinary procedures. Employees are legally protected by various federal and state laws from being retaliated against for filing a sexual harassment charge. Retaliation is any action taken to extract revenge or punish an employee for filing complaints regarding sexual harassment or discrimination in the workplace. The time frame in which a retaliation complaint must be filed differs from state to state. Actions which are protected from retaliation in relation to sexual harassment generally include the following. Informing the person designated by your company of harassment incident. Filing a formal harassment complaint. Assisting other individuals in making a complaint who have experienced harassment. Providing information and or testifying regarding a sexual harassment incident. What should you do when you feel you are a victim of sexual harassment or you have witnessed sexual harassment? You should first inform the person that you are offended by their actions and would like for them to stop. Many times this will resolve the issue and no further action will be necessary. If you are not comfortable in confronting the person or the behavior is blatantly inappropriate, you should inform the company representative immediately. If you and the company representative believe the actions were not intended to be harassing in nature, the company representative will discuss the issue with the person and insist the behavior stop. Again, no additional actions may be needed if the perpetrator ceases the inappropriate behavior. If the actions are blatantly inappropriate, then the company representative will begin the task of investigating the incident immediately after being notified. To assist in the investigation, you should write down and document all information concerning the incident, including date and time of the incident, location where incident took place, person or persons involved, including any possible witnesses, detailed description of what happened, any other pertinent information that will help in the investigation. Your company's sexual harassment policy will outline the exact steps to be taken during this time. Steps to stop the unwelcome actions and secure your well-being or that of the victim will be the first priority of the process. A fact-finding investigation will then ensue. The time needed to conduct the investigation will depend upon the circumstances of the case you can be assured any measures taken during the investigation should not affect you in a negative manner. If sexual harassment is found to have occurred, the disciplinary actions taken against the harasser should not affect you in a negative manner. Measures will be taken to restore you or the victim to the position you would have held had the harassment not occurred. Such measures might include an apology from the harasser, reinstatement, promotion, wage increase, replacement of time taken off, and correction of any other effect caused by the incident. Your employer takes this issue very seriously and will take all necessary steps to not only create a safe and harassment-free workplace, but to correct any situation that occurs. As an employee, it is important that you are aware of your company's sexual harassment policy. If you believe you have been a victim of sexual harassment, do not hesitate to report it to the appropriate personnel in your organization.
sexual harassment is not a laughing matter and must always be taken seriously. <laughs>